Well, you can easily verify that. Uh, one can easily verify that. One can easily verify that. Uh, one can easily verify that uh, domain of a row inverse is equal to image of a row. So, image of a row. And image of a row inverse is equal to domain of row. Image of row inverse is equal to domain of row. So also also uh, you can see that x row inverse image of row is non empty if and only if the domain of row inverse is non empty if and only if x belongs to domain of row inverse okay if and only if x belongs to domain of row inverse and that's true if and only if but domain of row inverse is same as image of row that's if and only if x belongs to image of row that's as uh, simple that's not too difficult one uh, uh, more thing uh, that uh, if uh, if uh, we have this row subset of sigma then this implies row inverse is subset of sigma inverse so these are simple you can uh, uh, the simple verification is you can uh, verify these uh, things yourself uh, so next we define a partial map partial map an element phi of bx and element phi of bx bx means it's a class of collection of binary relations so phi is a binary relation and element phi of bx means a binary relation phi on x is called a partial map is called a is called a partial map is called a partial map if if uh, the image of element is unique its cardinality is 1 whenever x is in for all x belongs to domain of phi so whenever x is in domain of phi the image of x should be unique the cardinality of the x phi is equal to 1 its image should be unique it's uh, like a map but uh, here the domain is not whole x so it's a subset of that x that's a domain of phi eh? domain of phi means it's a subset of x in general so phi uh, suppose uh, it's it's a uh, phi is a binary relation from x to x from x to x whose uh, and it's a function from certain subset of x suppose it's y it's a function from this set to this set phi it's a function okay and such a function is called a partial map on x it's a partial map from x to x and a function from some subset of x to y that's partial map so whenever x is in domain of phi the image of x should be a unique point in here so cardinality of x phi should be equal to 1 whenever x is here x a point Okay, uh, that's uh, the definition. Uh, so this can be expressed as uh, this can be expressed by uh, saying that uh, that is that is if x comma y one comma x comma y two belongs to five is a partial map, then this y one should be equal to y two. The image of x should be unique. Image of x should be unique. Uh, if phi and psi, if phi and psi are partial maps on x, are partial maps on x such that phi is subset of psi, then we say, then we say phi is restriction, restriction of psi. 
phi is restriction of psi r psi is an extension phi is a rest the restriction in size is an extension size in size an extension of phi so these are two partial maps say that phi subset of x phi subset of psi then we see phi is a restriction of psi and or we can say psi is an extension of phi okay so clearly that uh, the domain of psi will be bigger than domain of phi because phi is subset of psi that's trivial so that's why you can see this phi is restriction of psi or we can say psi is an extension of phi and uh, if uh, if uh, if suppose a uh, domain of phi domain of phi is equal to a which is subset of domain of psi because phi is subset of psi so domain of phi must be subset of domain of psi then we write it as then phi and then we write this then we denote phi by denote uh, phi by phi equal to psi restricted on a Okay, phi is the restriction of psi on e where e is subset of domain of psi. Now, uh, in uh, now in next term, we'll show that the collection of all partial maps is a sub semigroup of B X. The collection of all these uh, binary relations. Okay, fair enough. And it is denoted by P X. So what is P X? P X means a set of all partial maps on, on X. So it is a subset of B X. Actually, the subset, the subset P X, are B X, consisting of all partial maps. Consisting of all partial mappings. On X is a sub semi group of BX is a sub semi group of BX. So group is a simple. Uh, so in fact, so we can say this actually is semi group set of partial mapping is a semi group actually. It's a sub semi group of BX. So let's uh, we just need to prove the composition. Let phi and psi belong to BX. We show that we show that phi composition size is also in B X. Phi composition size is in B X. That's trivial, but we need to show that it is in P X. P X means uh, the if X in domain of phi composition size, then the image of X is unique. So let let us suppose that X comma y one and X comma y two belongs to phi composition size. That means X is Is in the domain of a composition psi, and it has supposed two images y one and y two. We need to show that y one is equal to y two. Now, by definition of composition, there exists z in X such that x comma z x comma z x comma z for this uh, there exists z one and z two because we have two. Ordered pairs for this ordered pair, I can find z1 such that x comma z1 belongs to phi, and z1 comma y1 belongs to psi. And next, now x comma y2 belongs to phi composition psi. I can find z2 such that x comma z2 belongs to phi, and z2 comma this y2 it belongs to psi. So this implies since this phi. It's a partial map, and under this partial map, these uh, zero one and zero two, they are the images of X. But since phi is phi is a partial map, therefore zero one is equal to zero two. Zero one is equal to zero two as as phi belongs to P X. Now look at here, zero one is equal to zero two. So they are this. Uh, this is the one element. Zero one zero two. So just one element. Uh, so we can denote by zero actually. Zero equal to say zero. They are equal, and this is equal to zero. Suppose so. This is zero, and this is zero here. So and zero has two images under psi, and psi is a partial map. Therefore, y one is equal to y two. So 
so and uh, this gives this gives y1 is equal to y2 as psi belongs to px as psi is a partial map so therefore whenever x comma y1 and x comma y2 they belong to phi composition psi then y1 is equal to y2 so that means phi composition psi is a partial map it's a partial map okay yeah Twenty-one. Now, next, uh, 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 we have a proposition. Uh, so, therefore, we have this Px with composition operation as a composition of binary relation is is a semigroup, is it? And this semigroup is called a semigroup of partial mappings, and is called and is called the semigroup of semigroup of all partial mappings okay now uh, we have following proposition following theorem uh, if phi comma psi if phi comma psi they are two partial maps then then the domain of phi composition psi is same as image of phi intersection domain of phi domain of psi sorry interesting domain of psi and uh, now we apply it on phi inverse it's this. that's first part and second part is image of image of phi composition psi is equal to image of phi intersection domain of psi domain of psi and apply psi on that so this uh, these two results and finally uh, we need to show that the composition in the binary operation is actually the composition of the mapping is because they are actually the mapping is on set on certain subset of x and uh, and and and, uh, and we had to show that for all x belongs to Domain of phi composition side, but but first x should be in the domain because uh, this phi composition side is not a map; it's a partial map actually. So for all x in the domain, for all x in the domain, uh, we have x phi composition psi is equal to x phi of psi. This it is just the composition of mappings, like like composition of mappings. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, Let's visualize this uh, in the following picture, uh, following diagram. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, here we have domain of image of phi intersection domain of psi image of phi. This is suppose image of phi, and that is this is this one. It is image of psi image of phi. Sorry. This is image of phi, and this one is domain of psi, and that's the intersection part here. This one is the intersection portion, and here, uh, because means here is the image of phi, so it should here should be domain of. This is domain of phi, and phi is a map, partial map, from domain of phi to image of phi. Okay. And here uh, we have a domain of wait psi here. We have a domain of psi here, so domain of psi should be a map from uh, psi should be a map from domain of psi to image of psi. So this one is image of psi, image of psi. And we need to show that whenever we apply phi inverse on this intersection, phi inverse, so it should be here. It should be equal to this part. This is just applying phi inverse here on that portion. It's equal to it's equal to uh, domain of phi composition psi domain of phi composition psi. So this one 
whenever I apply phi inverse on this so I need to show that uh, this is equal to domain of domain of phi composition sorry okay and whenever I apply a uh, whenever I apply psi on that intersection psi on that intersection whenever I apply psi on this then it should be here somewhere uh, and this portion should be equal to what it should be equal to when I apply psi it should be equal to image of phi composition psi it is equal to image of phi composition psi that's what uh, we need to prove actually okay let's prove this uh, I will prove only first part uh, and this one and the second part uh, is uh, follows and similar lines as part one So I will do this first part. What's the first part proof? First part. We need to prove first part means domain of phi composition psi. Domain of phi composition psi is equal to is equal to image of phi intersection domain of psi. Image of phi intersection domain of phi and apply this psi inverse so or phi inverse or psi inverse, phi inverse on this. Okay, this I will prove. So both are actually set. So I have to prove that, that uh, this set inclusion actually. Yeah. Now let us suppose that x belongs to here. Let x belongs to domain of phi composition psi. So whenever x is in the domain, then there should be some point in the image. So there exists to say y belongs to x such that uh, such that uh, x comma y belongs to y is in the image phi composition psi now again by definition of the composition there is z in x such that x comma z belongs to phi and z comma y belongs to psi z comma y belongs to psi so this implies here z comma y belongs to psi means z is in the domain of psi z is in the domain of psi so this imp and also z is in the image of phi so that means z belongs to domain of phi and image of psi so that means z belongs to because z is here it is in the image of phi so it is an image of phi intersection but here it is in the domain of psi domain of so z belongs to this intersection and also this uh, zx also zx belongs to phi inverse because xz belongs to phi the converse of a relation so that implies where is x now x belongs to x is in the image of x belongs to z phi inverse x is in the z of phi inverse but why is z? z is in the z belongs to image of phi so it belongs to image of phi intersection domain of psi then phi inverse so therefore whenever x is in the domain of phi composition psi then x is in the image of phi intersection domain of psi phi inverse so which implies domain of phi composition psi is subset of image of phi intersection domain of psi and phi so you just uh, need to apply the definition here because uh, it's uh, everything we have applied the definition here uh, that definition of domain here the definition of composition now here the definition of converse so it's uh, it's simple uh, just apply definition now let's put this converse. So inverse, uh, converse, uh, this reverse inclusion. Let's do the reverse inclusion. Uh, let's do reverse in inclusion. For reverse in inclusion, I have to choose x. Let x belongs to. Let x belongs to image of phi intersection domain of psi. And phi inverse. Okay. 
so that means x is in the domain of phi in a phi inverse in other words x belongs to the image of phi so that's one and the same thing x belongs to domain of phi inverse or x belongs to image of phi that's one and the same thing so when x belongs to the x belongs to this uh, uh, x belongs to this set it is phi inverse of that uh, phi inverse of that so that means there exists z belongs to here by definition here image of phi intersection domain of psi such that such that uh, this uh, x comma such that uh, phi inverse of that such that x comma z belongs to phi inverse x comma phi belongs to phi inverse okay so or you can say or we can say this uh, x belongs to z of phi inverse you can write this as also x belongs to z or x belongs to or you can say this uh, z comma x belongs to phi so is on x comma z or z comma x belongs to phi they are the same things actually yeah now where is z z is in the domain of phi now where now since uh, z belongs to domain of psi here because uh, x is in image of phi intersection domain of psi phi inverse okay so phi inverse applied on this eh? so z belongs to this so z is in domain of psi so there exist y belongs to x such that uh, such that uh, uh, z comma y belongs to psi that's again the definition z comma y belongs to psi so which implies so hence uh, hence we can see so z comma x belongs to phi z comma y belongs to psi so that means z is in the domain of phi as well as do uh, no you can apply here composition eh? okay you can apply here composition z comma x z phi z y uh, we have here x comma z x comma z belongs to here uh, I think uh, x so z belongs to domain such that x comma z belongs to not it should be x comma z belongs to phi because it is x x comma z belongs to phi not phi inverse actually because that is here so x comma z is in the domain of phi inverse so that means z is in the image of so z is in the domain of phi inverse okay so that means z is in the image of phi it's here phi sorry it's here phi it's here phi so or we can say x belongs to or we can say x belongs to z phi inverse that is uh, this is not here this is not correct yeah? so you can you can see it here so here z is in the domain of phi inverse because this one is the domain of phi inverse here it's a subset of domain of phi inverse that is here so z belongs to domain of phi inverse whenever z belongs to domain of phi it means that z comma x belongs to phi inverse z is in the domain of phi inverse okay so which means x comma z belongs to phi so we have x comma z belongs to phi and z comma y belongs to psi so these two combine these two here now apply the definition of composition x z is in phi z comma z comma y is in psi which implies x comma y is in phi composition psi x comma y is in phi composition psi and that implies x belongs to the domain of phi composition psi that's the definition again so therefore therefore this image it subset of domain of phi composition psi therefore image of phi intersection domain of psi is subset of domain of phi composition psi so which combining these two inclusions this gives us we have thus we finally that this domain of phi 
composition size is equal to image of phi intersection domain of psi image of phi intersection domain of psi then apply here what phi inverse q they are equal this proves the part one now second part follows on similar lines uh, so let's prove the last one now uh, Let's prove last one. Uh, that's uh, this uh, uh, third one. If x belongs to if x belongs to domain of phi composition psi domain of phi composition psi, then we can find x of phi composition psi because it's a it's a unique one because x phi composition psi is a partial map and it's equal to x phi composition psi. This one. <laughs> We need to put this part now. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, let's do this. Uh, uh, let uh, let uh, let x comma y belongs to phi composition psi. So this implies. X of phi composition psi is equal to y. This is sitar. This is star. Now also uh, there X is Z in X such that X comma Z belongs to phi. And z comma y belongs to psi by composition. X y belongs to phi composition psi by the property of composition. So uh, uh, actually, uh, we need to find uh, there are partial maps actually. Uh, so this since phi is partial map, psi is partial. Map, therefore, z is a unique image of x, so which implies x phi is actually z, and this y is the unique image of z. So z phi is Y, z phi is y. Now uh, let's uh, have this. Uh, this uh, therefore, 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 uh, this y, which is equal to z phi, but z z is equal to x. Sorry, it's z psi. Okay, it is z psi. Z psi. What's z? Z is equal to x phi x phi of psi. So let's apply the star here. So what's y? Y is actually equal x of phi composition psi, which is equal to x phi psi. So therefore, the composition of two partial map is is just the composition of the mappings actually. Composition of these partial mappings. So that proves uh, this uh, theorem completely. And uh, next, uh, we have another sub semi group of. We have a sub semi group of uh, P X now. Let's take T X. T X is is the is the set of all mapping set of all mappings on X. Then this T X it's a subset of P X and P X is subset of B X. And we know that this T X is a semi group with respect to composition of mapping. Is therefore T X is a sub semi group of P X and P X is a sub semi group of B X. And uh, uh, one uh, can easily verify that uh, this. Uh, now we have a following term that you can do it yourself. Uh, it's uh, if let x be a non-empty set. Let x be a non-empty set. Let x be a non-empty set. Then, then phi belongs to partial map. If not, then first part. If phi belongs to partial map, then phi inverse is also partial. If and only if phi is one one, phi is one one. So in general, phi inverse is not partial map. You can easily construct an example of a partial map such that it inverse is not a partial. Map. That's very simple. That's not too difficult. Similarly, if uh, phi belongs to T X, phi is a map. Then phi inverse is also map that you had done in. The graduation chorus. Then phi inverse is also a map if and only if phi is bijective. If and only if phi is bijective. 
So uh, I will give an example where uh, this phi is an px, phi is a partial map, but phi inverse is not a partial map. Uh, I will explain it with an, of an example. So let's take x is equal to say 1, 2. Let's uh, take this px. px is equal to say 1, 1, 2, then 2, 2. It's a it's a px because uh, image of every element is unique. One image of one is only two. Image of two is only two. But uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, actually this is a uh, one of the partial map. Uh, this is a phi. This is equal to phi belongs to px. But what's phi inverse? You can see what's phi inverse. Phi inverse is this. It's two one and 2 2 and it's not in px because the uh, image of 2 is 1 as well as 2 so 2 has 2 image 2 has actu actually 2 images here so therefore phi inverse is not p is not in px but phi is in px so that's an example of phi which is a partial map but it's it's inverse and not a partial map and inverse is all only partial map if and only phi is 1 1 so here it's not 1 1 because the, the element 1 it's many 1 1 and 2 goes to same element 2 so it's actually many one. So phi inverse is a partial map if it's one one. So that's this uh, a proposition actually that we have created here. This uh, phi belongs to px. Then phi inverse is, is a partial map if and only phi is one one. Thank you.